So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the second edition of Corval Data Lab. This is our second data lab for comparing two or more variables. This is inspired by a tweet I saw from The Economist, and this is a chart that you see there. Is it something like a combination of comet chart, dumbbell chart, lollipop? I'm not sure what it is, but I think it's very, very clear, and I loved it. So we're going to reproduce it using Northwind in Power BI. Let's get started. So this is how the chart looks in Power BI. And the wonderful thing about doing Inch Articulator in Power BI is that it's dynamic. You can pick any range in here and the chart will adjust. So here we have for 1997, we have from between 1996 and 1997. So it is really, really wonderful. Now, I have prepared a tab for you with the values that I need, we have the slicer here. I have the beverages, so the product category. I have a measure that calculates the sales for the less, for the minimum value on the slicer from the, for the maximum value. I have the variance, so the difference between both. And then to be able to color the chart, I have a, another uh, measure that will tell me if I should color it one way or another. So if it is an increase or decrease, okay? These calculations, I show you how to do them on Corval main channel. So if you want to learn how to do that, click somewhere in here. It will be a link in the description and also at the end of the video. So if you want to do it, otherwise you're going to get the file. You will always get the file. Okay, so let's do this thing. First thing that you need to do, go to get more visuals and grab Charticulator again so to make sure that you have the latest one, okay? So we're going to do, click on Charticulator, go to edit, make sure that you move all the stuff up to the data box, close in here, create chart. So far so good, right? Okay, now the first thing that we need to do is to change this stack Y. So you wanna see this like that. So we're going to stack them like this, not like this, okay? Next thing, we're going to use a data axis and we're going to go from one to the other, right? And drag it in. And we're going to drag the sales mean and the sales max, okay? And we're going to make this a little bit bigger. One of the nice additions of Charticulator is this little box that allows you to zoom in the data. Look at that with a box. I love it. Thank you for that. So we're going to go in there and then we're going to put from there to there a line. Okay. Another thing that we're going to do is we're going to add the, as the Y axis, we need to add a uh, text box. So I'm going to drop the text box in there and I'm going to put the category name. So, and then we can put it back. One of the things that we cannot do in Charticulator for now is to be able to uh, wrap the text. I have asked Charticulator people to do that. Let's see if we can get it soon. Uh, what we're going to do now is to do the text a little bit smaller, right? Because Otherwise, it takes up a lot of the chart. And we want to invert those values for the data axis. So we're going to go here and the position we're going to put the opposite. So they go down and we need to add the formatting to point to S to get, you'll see now, you see, 20,000, 30,000, which makes more sense, basically. Make it a little bit bigger. And um, yeah. Now, one thing that we're going to do, the line, we're going to change the color based on the color variation column. So we're going to put it there and color this thing. So increase, I want to have it red. Decrease, I want to have it, no, <laughs> the other way around. Increase, I want to have it green. Decrease, I want to have it red, okay? And then I want to make them a little bit bigger. Make sure that when you are doing this, you're picking the time intervals where there is increase or decrease. Otherwise, uh, chart regulator will not offer them for you. So I have to pick between 1997 and 98. 
Okay. So this is starting to look quite similar. The next thing I'm going to do is to put the triangles. So let's put in there. We're going to grab one of these and then we're going to click in there. And this is smaller. I'm going to change this to a triangle. And I want the triangle. We're going to do the increase first. So 270 it means that it should rotate to, to point to that way, <laughs> basically. I'm going to paint it green. And what else? I'm going to here put increase so I know what it is. It's the name of the label. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger, not that much. We... That should be enough. Okay. And then we need to make this appear for the red values, right? So here on visibility, you just put color variance and then you say you want to have it only for the increase. That's all. Save. And now we're going to put the triangle for the decrease. So same way, go in here, zoom in a little bit, grab it there, point there, boom. And, sorry, one second. So shift, click and click. So now you need to click the shift key in order to be able to have the properties set separately from the other triangle, otherwise they will inherit each other, which is a mess. Now, we're going to call this the crease, right? And now we're going to put it as a triangle. We need to rotate it 90 degrees this time, and we're going to color it red, because this is our decrease. And then for the visibility, again, shift, color, and um, we need to move it. But first, let's do, it shouldn't be on increase, it should be only on decrease, okay? And we're going to go there, in there, grab it until you see something red, and then you're going to move that one there, boom. Wait, sorry. You need to make sure that you grab the, the triangle and not the line. I was grabbing the line. You see, now I have the triangle in. So, put it there. Okay, now, save. Beautiful. Another thing that we want to have is the line, the guide, to be able to help the eyes follow the line. And to do that, we're going to grab this line and put it from there to there. Okay, anchor it back, make it smaller. This is our guide. We're going to make it a little bit lighter, a little bit thicker, and we want to put the layer, so we want to put it behind our object. So you can actually do that by changing the order of your elements. You can see that it goes behind. Really cool. Save. And now the last thing that we need to add is the the values, if you want to, obviously, you don't have to, but I think it's always quite nice to give them some type of value so you don't have to guess it. So grab the line, make sure that you have the line, and then the text, click on there, put your sales variance in there, and now let's format that. So we go to, here we're going to have 2s, so this is the data label, and we are going to color it, there we have it, there, by, yeah, green and red. And that's all, folks. That's how easy it is to make. And then you can just sort it by whatever you like. The sorting capabilities are so weird to me still. But here you can do sort by sales max, for example. So it looks a little bit better, right? It's a little bit easier to read, to follow the line. How cool is this? Again, if you want to know how to do the calculations for this, go to my main channel, Kerbal. 
I have just created a video on how to do the Zeus Max, Zeus Mean, the variants, all that stuff. So you are ready to go. Okay, I will see you again next week. Until then, take care.